Hi, I'm Tarinda. You're watching Hexus TV. With me is Richard Stewart, Marketing Manager for MSI UK. Richard, Intel's launching some new CPUs next couple of months and they need new supporting core logic, P55 in the first case. You've got a couple of boards here. Can you talk us through A, the boards and B, any value-adding features you think you've got? Okay, yeah, so I brought along two boards today. One is a GD80, which is our um, high-end P55 based model. And also one step down from that is a GD65. Mm -hmm. So this is our mainstream uh, performance board. Um, and for our P55 range of boards, we're talking about three major, or one major topic, which is speed. Okay, we, we, we're trying to introduce MSI boards as you know, extreme speed. Right. And inside that, we've introduced three new features, really. One is uh, Superpipe. So Superpipe, uh, we, you see the heat pipe on MSI P55 boards now is eight millimeters thick. Yeah, it's thicker than normal, right? That's right, yeah. so they usually about six millimeters. So mm. we've added some, some um, size to those. The second uh, feature is Dr. Moss. So Dr. Moss is one actually we've, we've been running on MSI boards since P45, actually. Mm. Um, and that's a three-in-one component, very efficient very cool running component. And the third, uh, and we... So sorry, what's, what's the purpose of Dr. Moss? Okay, so Dr. Moss is um, what we call a PWM uh, chip. So this combines three, what used to be three components mm -hmm. into one. And so that sort of sits in between your PSU and say your CPU or your memory, whatever needs power. And as your CPU needs power, perhaps you're overclocking your motherboard, so it needs to draw more power, the PWM chip's job is to make sure the CPU gets the right amount of power it needs to do the job that it wants to do. Um, and so Dr. Moss is a chip that controls that. Sure. Uh, and the third, and we feel the most innovative feature, is also our OC Genie. Okay? So OC Genie is totally new for MSI on P55. And essentially what OC Genie does at one touch of a button is overclock the board. That includes CPU and memory. Um, to, uh, well, we, we say at least 20% performance gain. So that's, if you take a regular benchmark, let's say PiFast, yep. you're guaranteed to get 20%? Well, the, the, the performance increase of, say, the CPU, for example, mm. by pressing OC Genie, we can, well, I should say we can get 20% more performance out of that component, okay? Right. And that includes the memory as well. So as a platform, just by pressing OC Genie, we can, I mean, we're going to say we can give people around about a 20% performance boost. So if I was to buy the fastest LGA1156 chip that sits in there, yep. I can even get 20% above that by just pressing one button. You can get that, yes. One button press. Guaranteed. So we, from our testing so far, mm -hmm. we, can, we, can, we can say about 20%. But every chip is different, so I don't want to promise your you know, yeah. your viewers, that they're going to get 20% out, but definitely that's our target. How does that interfere, if I can say that, with Turbo Boost on the chips? Because they, they do a similar feature, next speed grade, grade up at least. Okay, so we, from our testing, we think uh, OC Genie is, is better than Turbo Mode. So when you enable OC Genie on MSI motherboards, that disables the Turbo Mode okay. from the CPU. Um, so yes, enabling OC Genie will disable that turbo mode, but your performance gain from enabling OC Genie is higher. more than your performance gain from enabling turbo mode. And I see that, um, did a preview on this board, the GD65, layout's fairly clear, or very clear, yep. obviously helped by not having a, a north bridge. Um, so seeing that, obviously micro ATX boards should be in the offing. That's right, we do have a micro ATX board, and f we will have a micro ATX board for launch. So yes, it's, you're right, because the layout is very clean, it's just one chip solution now. Mm. So micro ATX is definitely possible. Looking at Core i7, um, some of your cheaper boards, the cheapest I've seen is about 130 pounds. That's right. That's much, much lower than it was even three months ago. Mm. What kind of pricing are you thinking about on these P55 boards, considering that, as we can see, they've got a few extra features? That's right. So I mean, the, the final pricing hasn't been set at, at this time, but I can give you a, a, an estimate figure. For the GD65, we're probably looking at around 130 to 140 pounds. GD80, um, maybe 160 pounds. Right. So it's, it's higher than the entry level X58 based boards now, but the feature set on these two boards is far greater than the feature set on an and entry level X58. As I said, we looked at this one previously as a preview. Why would I buy a GD80? 
Okay, so GD80 has a few more um, features for the power user or the enthusiast. Okay, so the first thing you'll notice is the heat pipe array. So here we, we have the heat pipe running from the PWMs around the CPU socket right down to the chipset, mm. whereas on a GD65 we don't have that. We also have uh, a higher phase count on the GD80, so the extra phases will help the overall overclocking stability. Um, we also have a few very enthusiast friendly features, so options such as a, a debug LED, mm -hmm. uh, we have touch sensitive buttons on the PCB, and also we have uh, what we're calling V-Kit. So there's a little dip switch there next to, the, um, next to a, a, a space to actually take voltage measurements direct from the PCB, and by switching these switches you can get an extra 0.2 volts on memory, CPU and chipset. OK, I thought dip switches went out about two years ago. I was seeing them on plenty of boards. P55, that's fairly, if we can say, low-cost chips. So will you have cheaper lines to complement that? Because um, people would like to buy Core i7, but with the base chip being £200 plus investment on top in terms of triple-channel RAM, yep. it gets expensive fairly quickly. Yep. So this is a nice range, as far as we can tell anyway. What about the more budget OK. Options? Yeah, we do, have, we do have a couple of budget options. So we spoke about the Micro ATX. I think that will come at the most entry level uh, price point. Then we'll have one more board in between, which is part of our classic series. So CD, uh, CD53, uh, which will sit just below the, the GD65 here. So in total, for launch, we'll have four boards. And yes, two of those will be more entry level. I've seen some of your competitors use two ounce copper and make a big deal of that. I don't see that printed on the circuit board here, and it's probably not present. Is that a, a useful feature? And how does MSI get round that heat problem, well, if we can call it that? Well, M for MSI, we have a slightly different mentality. So we try to say kind of less is more. So we, we, we have Dr. Moss chips for a start. So that means we don't need as many phase counts as some of our competitors. And so for the heat problem, Dr. Moss is a cooler running chip. So the way we see it is we're trying to eliminate the heat problem before there's a heat problem. So we don't have two ounces copper B PCB because actually we don't feel we need it. Our boards run cool without having that two ounce copper PCB. I mean, we still take heat seriously. We still have heat pipe array. We have super pipe. But for us, that's more than enough to keep our boards cool. And just looking at this board again, the GD80, as an enthusiast, can I run triple SLI? Uh, three-way crossfire? You, you can run three-way and the, with, a, with a lane layout of 884. OK, it's all coming off the CPU. As we said, there's no Northbridge or IOH on the X58. That's right. One feature we don't see on these boards, or it's not obvious at least, is USB 3.0. Okay. Um, we have seen it on some of the competition. Why, why is it missing? OK, so from MSI side, we haven't implemented USB 3.0. Simple reason is because it's very difficult, if at all possible, to find USB 3 enabled devices on the market now. So we think, I mean, we are excited about USB 3, of course, but we think maybe this platform right now at this time isn't the right time to launch a, an, or to include a new technology like USB 3 onto our P55s. Uh, how soon could we see it? Can um, you give us a time frame? I would expect. Like you say, there's manufacturers now who are already thinking about putting that on the board. We're thinking the same. Um, so, so it's very possible on the next platform, you, you may well see USB 3 support. OK, so we've talked about some of the features, talked about the pricing, and it's a little bit lower than a comparable X58. Mm -hmm. Do you see the launch of the new chips and the chipset cannibalizing the market for X58? I think there's still a performance gap there. So um, I think if you're really looking to build the ultimately, uh, well, the quickest system you can, then probably X58 and the high-end Core i7 is still the way to go. So there is still triple channel memory on X58, for example. So you're getting, there are more performance there. So I think that the, it, it may well be that the entry level X58 boards do take a hit as such on the P55. And could that be one reason why they're priced so attractively now, to get stock out of the door before P55 hits? Potentially. I mean, that's, that's something that everyone needs to think about. Everyone's got the X58 
stock on hand now. So, you know, nobody wants to have a lot of X58 stock, a lot of P55 stock. You need to manage your stock levels carefully. Mm. So nobody's, at, at this time, we can't be totally sure how well P55 will be, um, you know, received. accepted mm -hmm. and received. Yeah, but uh, I think there's still going to be a gap there for X58 at the top enthusiast level. Okay. So that's a couple of P55 boards from MSI. We'll be looking at more in due course, so stay tuned for more on Hexus TV.